Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial for Motion Symphony for Unreal Engine 4. In this tutorial, we're going to continue where we left off uh, following the motion matching pipeline in step two. In the last tutorial, we, we talked about the motion configuration module, and this is all about what we want to match, what bones we want to match, uh, uh, what trajectory points we want to match, and their times. Uh, whereas the motion calibration module is all about how we want to match it. Basically, it's a set of weightings to all the things that we decided to match. So the weighting of any given bone's position, its weighting of its velocity, and for the trajectory, the weighting of its trajectory point positions and facing angles. I highly recommend you read this part of the documentation before watching the video. It's a good supplement and you'll understand the video a lot better. Or read it afterwards, it's up to you. Either way, let's jump back into Unreal Engine and create this module. So to create it, we right click in our content browser, choose animation and motion calibration. I'm going to call mine motion my calibration and I'll hit enter. You'll get this message message that says Motion matching calibration needs to be paired with a motion config asset to function properly. Please edit the calibration. This is just a reminder that you do need to pair it, otherwise it's not going to work. So we'll do that straight away. Open the calibration module, and we'll see we have a slot where we can plug in our motion config. I'm not gonna do that straight away. First, I want to show you these two lists that are in this little advanced tab here. And right now they're empty. Basically, these are the final weightings that are gonna be used at runtime for each of your atoms. For bone position, for bone weights, we have the position and the velocity weights. And for trajectories points, we have the trajectory position weight and the trajectory facing weight. Now we don't populate these arrays manually, um, but however we can edit them. When I add in the configuration module, it's gonna populate them automatically. So we should just not touch them uh, for now. Um, and we can hide that there. What we do need to look at is our defaults. Now I do recommend leaving the defaults as the de as default to start with and tweaking them later. But basically you can see for each of those, you know, bone position, bone velocity, trajectory position and trajectory facing, we do have some default values which are going to be used to populate this. So I'm just gonna drag in my configuration module into my calibration module. And you'll see that these lists have now automatically been populated with the default values, one one for bones and five three for trajectory weights. Now we can now tweak these if we like, but most people don't need to do that. Um, we can just leave it as is. Now before we go on, there's a few th more things we need to look at. We can ha we have these values for weight momentum and weight angular momentum. Now these technically aren't about mo characters' momentum, they're more about velocity, so the character's current velocity and rotational velocity. However, I've decided to call them momentum because that's how it behaves at runtime. The higher this number is, the more momentum of your character will be preserved, and the lower, the less momentum. So it's up to you how you wanna do this depending on your game. Of course, the more momentum, obviously to a reasonable degree, if you put it too much, it's probably not gonna be very good. Um, the more momentum, yes, the more realistic, but also uh, the less responsive. And same for rotational momentum, it's sort of like doing turns. You know, if you're turning one way, you won't be able to suddenly turn the other way. It's all about realistic weight shifting that a human would actually do. Uh, but the default of 1-1 is probably a good starting point. The last thing we need, really need to look at here, and probably the thing that most people will touch, um, you, you may not touch anything else than this, and that is the quality versus responsiveness ratio. So set at 0.5, it weights the pose and the trajectory, trajectory evenly. If we slide it more towards the right, it, the trajectory suddenly becomes more important. And if we slide it to the left, the pose becomes more important. And so you could call it a pose trajectory ratio, but I call it a quality responsiveness ratio because again, this is the result that it happens at runtime. The more you have it to the pose side, the higher the quality of the animation in terms of you know realistic fidelity. Um, whereas you lose a little bit of responsiveness going this way. If you put it more this way, you get more responsiveness, but less quality. You might have skips in your animation or you just won't have the good weight shifting. It won't be as high fidelity. But again, this is your first time, so let's leave it at 0 0.5. So there we go, that is our calibration module. 
Right now, these two assets by themselves don't do anything, but motion matching or in motion symphony is a completely modular approach. We do one little thing at a time, and then that all comes together at the end, as you'll see in later tutorials. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial where we'll make the core asset, the core module for motion matching, the motion data. And that is where all our animations are. And that is what runs, that is the data that runs the motion matching at runtime. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in that next tutorial.